there thank you so much for joining me today my name is natasha welcome to my channel this video is an introduction for my partners in cream project pan for 2022 if you haven't heard of this project i would be really surprised because not only have i been doing it for the past two years but it's also a group project pan that tons of people participate in it was created by steph and delin and they i don't know if either of them are participating in it this year if they are it's probably a little different than past years for them but they are opening it up for everybody to participate again and i definitely wanted to jump on the chance to do it too the rules aren't very strict they recommend choosing anywhere from three to six products at a time. And we'll do monthly check-ins or monthly updates, uh, usually on the 10th of every month. It's a rolling project pan, so when you finish or hit your goal on one product, you can roll a new one in to take its place. And I believe there are also quarterly refreshes where you can you know, move out the products that you don't want to continue working on and bring new ones in. Again, I don't think the rules are very strict. I think the only main rule that they ask you to adhere to is to focus on cream and liquid products. It's kind of the point of the project pan being that it's called Partners in Cream, which is really cute by the way. I don't think I've ever said how cute I think that name is, Partners in Cream. It's just really great. <laughs> I love the premise for this project pan because the idea is cream and liquid products tend to expire more quickly. I'm starting out by focusing on seven products. One of them is not technically a makeup product and that is an SPF product. In past years, I would always have some type of SPF product in the rotation just to make sure that I was remembering to use sunscreen and SPFs more often and I would like to continue doing that for this year at least for the foreseeable future and I'm gonna start with this one here it's one of my oldest SPFs it's the Too Faced Hangover Good To Go Skin Protecting SPF 25 Moisturizer being only SPF 25 it's not the highest that I have in my collection but this is the oldest one that I have and I think it'd be fine to focus on this because I'm also going to be using an SPF foundation that I'll talk about next. Plus, it's the winter. I'm not leaving my house very often, and if I do, it's like incredibly overcast, just like it is today. I haven't seen the sun in days, it feels like, just because the weather has not been the best, and that's just how the winter is, at least where I live, so I think it's fine to focus on this one, and then the higher SPFs I'll focus on in the spring and summer whenever I do feel like I'm going to be at least exposed to the sun a little bit more. We're currently at 41.22 grams, and I would like to finish it. I feel like I have maybe two thirds of the product left in here. I do use a generous amount of pumps every time I use it though, because I also use it as my moisturizer. So I put it everywhere. I try to use a generous amount. I also try to get it on my neck and on my chest if I'm wearing something that shows that part of my skin. So sometimes I'm using like five pumps of this every single day that I use it. And it is something that I can use even if I'm not wearing makeup that day. So really I expect to fly through this and that's totally fine. I have no problem doing that with SPFs because I know that the more I wear, the more I'm protected. The other SPF product that is a makeup product that I'm pairing with it is the CC Plus Cream from It Cosmetics. Honestly, I've had this for a while, so I don't know if technically the SPF 50 in here is as effective as it was when it was brand new. This is one of those foundations that I don't use for a while. I come back to it and I realize how much I love it. Something about the texture and the way this looks on my skin, I just always love it. I love the shade match. I'm in the shade Fair. We're starting out at... 40 grams exactly. I very much want to finish it. It's something that I had wanted to finish last year. I didn't get around to doing it and I would like to make sure I do it this year. And I think this is gonna take me a while though because I really only need one pump for my entire face. Let's talk about two lip products that I would like to focus on. The first one I would like to finish, it's from Charlotte Tilbury. It's their Lip Luster Gloss in the shade Evies and Nights. This has like a little bit of like a tan goldy color and it does have some sparkles or some glitters in there too. I really like the formula of it. It is a really, really good quality gloss. Like it's very moisturizing and it, it does stay around for a while it's not one that I feel like I have to keep continuing to reapply and it also doesn't feel drier once I've applied it and it's worn off a little bit but the glitter part does stick around. I know it doesn't look like I have a lot left but it does take a long time to see any movement. I think because the doe foot applicator is very very small and I'm able to just use whatever is on the doe foot and then use whatever is like on the back of it as well. Kind of doing two swipes on either side and that's enough to cover. And I have been tracking my uses because I'm curious to see how long it would take to use this up and I have used this a ton 
considering how little product I feel like I'm actually using each time. So I imagine this one will take a while, at least a couple of months, and I enjoy it. It's probably not something I would buy again just because I'm not a fan of stuff with glitter in it, but I think it's really beautiful. I have no problem using it up. I just want to make sure I'm focusing on it before it expires. And same with the other lipstick. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Live It Up lipstick. This is their K-I-S-S-I-N-G formula, which is more of like a satin cream. It's a beautiful formula, nice and creamy. I just find that this type of color, while I have really enjoyed it, like obviously I've used a ton of it already, I don't feel like it's always the most flattering color for me, especially because of the other types of products that I wear. I did do a Charlotte Tilbury lip product swatching video, so you can see this in comparison with all the other Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks that I own. And this one, um, I was really surprised to see how much it stuck out. It's really one of the only like cool toned, more like pinky, Barbie pinky types of shades that I have. And that's just not really my style anymore. It is a beautiful product. I don't think I'm gonna have any problem finishing it. It's not like I regret wearing it or buying it, but it's my oldest Charlotte Tilbury lipstick. I would like to finish it. And I imagine once I hit the bottom part of the packaging there, I will dig it out and use it as a cream blush just to make sure I'm getting everything that I can out of there. And for this one, we're starting at 25 grams exactly. I do have another lip product, but technically I'm not using it on my lips, so it's more of a cheek product, and that is ABH Crush. It's a liquid lipstick. I've had this for many, many years. I think I've had it since 2016, and I only use it as a cream blush now. I usually mix it with a little bit of concealer or with a little bit of a liquid illuminator. This has been in several project pans in the past. I've used it a ton. I don't know if I'll be able to finish this. <laughs> Who's to say? There's just so much product in here and it's so pigmented that I don't really need a lot every time. For this one, we're starting at 21.3 grams. I'm gonna try my hardest to reach for this every time I apply makeup next month, just to see how much that affects the weight, just to see if it's something that I could feel like I could realistically finish. Another product I'd like to finish is from NYX. It's their Dark Circle Concealer in the shade Fair. This is a discontinued product. I have already hit pan on it. I put off trying to use it up for so long because it is discontinued. It's one of my favorites, but I would rather finish it and miss it than not use it and then let it expire and waste it anyway. For this one, we're starting at 14.91 grams, and I would like to finish it. I only use it on my under eyes, so I'm not entirely sure how long it'll take to finish, but I don't think it'll take too, too long. And the last one, I'm not sure about this one. It can really go either way. It is a highlighter stick from the brand Coco Kind. This is like $12, but you get so much product in here. I was trying to roll it up to see just how much product I had left, and I figured it'd be like the Benefit What's Up, where it's like maybe this much product or maybe a little bit more or less. And whenever I was rolling it up, it just never stopped. The product goes like pretty much all the way down to the bottom of the packaging. So even if I do use it on my cheekbones, if I use it as a glowy primer on certain parts of my face, if I use it on my collarbones, whenever I'm wearing more low cut tops, even if I actively try to use this a ton, I don't even know how much progress it's gonna show because it is in a stick form versus being like a liquid illuminator. It is a little bit of a stiffer formula, so I don't know how easily or quickly it will be to use up. Plus it is kind of like a rose gold coppery color, which isn't like the perfect match for me. So I'll probably use a little bit less of it than I would of more of a champagne or lighter gold beigey highlight. And honestly, I don't think I've actually fully used this on my face yet. <laughs> I've only like swatched it on the back of my hand. A couple different outcomes that can happen. If I do really like the product, uh, but it's a really slow moving product, I can continuously work on it, try to make some progress, and hopefully hope that I can finish it before it expires. I can also really like it and find that I can use it in a lot of different ways and go through it at a better pace and not have it take like the, entire of the, the entirety of the year to finish. Or I could find that I'm not really crazy about the formula or the color or something about it just doesn't really work in my routine and I will pass it on and move it on to someone who might appreciate it more. And so I will fill you in next month once I've played with it more of whether or not it'll stay and how long I think it'll take to finish. So those are all the products I have to talk about. I'm not sure if there's going to be a unified playlist, but I do think that they are gonna continue using the hashtag that they usually do. Last year we used Partners in Cream 2021, so I imagine this time we'll use Partners in Cream 
2022. So I will have that hashtag in my title or in my description box. And if you want to see more updates like this, more introductions, see who else is partaking, you can click on that hashtag and all the other videos will show up that used that same hashtag. If you were doing a Partners in Cream project pan, but on a different platform, maybe you're doing it on Instagram or a blog or something, please let me know. I'd love to follow your progress. But in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.